candidates for the Antichrist. As the end times quickly engulf us, and prophetic events begin to unfold, many researchers have made suggestions in regard to the identity of the Antichrist. One of the first was King Don Juan Carlos I of Spain, born in Rome, January 5, 1938, who was a direct descendant of Queen Victoria of England. In 1948 he was given over to Generalissimo Francisco Franco by his exiled parents, to be educated in Spain. He first attended the Instituto San Isidro, and then was given a private tutor in 1949. In 1955, he graduated from the Navy Orphans College, then attended the Academia General Militar at Saragossa, where he received a commission in the Spanish Army as a lieutenant, where he graduated third out of a class of 271. Until 1959, he received training from the Naval Academy, attaining the rank of midshipman in the Spanish Navy, and the Aviation Academy in San Xavier, where he received an officer's commission in the Spanish Air Force. In 1960, he entered the University of Madrid to study law, political science, economics, and philosophy. Carlos became king in 1975, and is recognized as Western Europe's most capable military leader. A new constitution ratified in 1978, made Carlos the most powerful monarch on the continent. Prince Charles Philip Arthur George Windsor, who was born November 14, 1948, a significant year, became the 21st Prince of Wales in 1969. The oldest child of Queen Elizabeth II, and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, is the heir apparent to King George VI. His wedding in 1981 captured the attention of the world, and it was rumored that his mother was considering abdicating the throne to him, which would have made him one of the most powerful figures in Europe by virtue of the fact that England is the most dominant country in Western Europe. In recent years, especially with books like The Antichrist and A Cup of Tea, by Tim Cohen, Prince Charles has become a more serious candidate because of the following facts. His heraldic coat of arms bears the symbols presented in Revelation 13, and Daniel 7. His name breaks down into the number 666 in both English and Hebrew using the biblical system. He has documentation that proves his bloodline descent from King David, Jesus and Muhammad but is most likely from the tribe of Dan. He has requested to be the king of Europe. It is believed that his power base is behind the new world order, and he is very involved in the prospect of world government. He has already taken a traceable biochip implant. Zaki Badawi, principal of the Muslim College, described him as the most popular world leader in the Muslim community throughout the world, a man of such stature, and is able to speak for all of us. In the spring of 2002, came the report that Prince Charles was to have a bronze statue erected in his honor in the square of Palmas, the capital of Docanchin state in central Brazil. Although he will already become the defender of the faith should he become king of England, he appears as a muscular, winged god dressed in a loincloth, with an inscription touting him as the savior of the world. The statue was commissioned by civic leaders because of Charles' work to publicize the threat to the rainforests from global warming. Jose Wilson Sequeira Campos, the governor of Docanchins, said, it is Prince Charles saving the world. We think he is deserving of it. It is already being compared to the statue of Christ overlooking Rio de Janeiro from Corcovado. When the sculptor Mauricio Bentes presented a miniature copy to the prince during his visit to Brazil, he said, I am amazed and deeply touched. One thing you need to realize, is that in the United States, we don't hear about much of the news that occurs overseas, especially with issues that are germane to Europe only, and have no international bearing. Though his international stature seems rather insignificant from our standpoint, it is actually quite prolific in that region of the world. He has been an ardent supporter of a united Europe, and he has used his political weight to help achieve that goal. James Lloyd, author on the 1992 book Beyond Babylon, who has an excellent reputation for his intensive research, believes that Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali, the sixth Secretary General of the UN, will be the Antichrist. In an interview broadcast on Lloyd's shortwave broadcast, Boutros Ghali maintained that the UN needed a drastic change if it was going to be able to take its place as the world government. He said it was important for the UN to get a consensus of the international community. Asked if the support of organized religion could help convince people to support world government, he said, why not? Citing Revelation 17:11, which says that the beast has seven heads, or leaders, and that even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition, Lloyd believes that the seventh head of the UN, Kofi Annan, will not finish his term, and that Boutros Ghali will be appointed to serve out the remainder of it.